My name's Jim Ma, and my family and I farm uh, basically the land between uh, Brigden and uh, Courtright, and we spread over a fair bit of territory. Uh, we do uh, about 800 acres of our own crop between my son and I, and we uh, do custom work on probably another thousand acres. Up until now, I have been the one that's mostly in control, uh, and I've done 90% of my own spraying myself. My son has uh, started in the last two to three years under my direction. He started to learn how, and he took the pesticide course this winter. Most of what we do is Roundup Ready soybeans. Uh, we're 50% soybeans, or maybe a little bit more. Uh, we do a little bit of corn and a little bit of wheat as well, um, so, but I spray that myself as a rule. Pesticide use is a cost to us and we want to try and reduce costs. That's good for our bottom line, so um, the less spray we can put on, the better off we are financially and my attitude has been for the last few years that if the field is totally spotless I spent too much money. So we try to hit that fine line where we have a few weeds but not enough to cause any problem with yield. Normally if I'm trying to uh, pick a spray I am sitting down with my uh, uh, supplier in which is Agris in Brigden and I talked to the guy at the counter who has maybe a, a little bit different light on it than I do. I have the experience in the field, he has the experience selling it and we probably go to the government book and say okay this is the weeds we want to control, this is the cheapest uh, uh, product that we can put on that will get what we need to do. Well, one of the things that we always do is there's always a pair of rubber gloves in the cab of the tractor. They sit right in the doorway so that uh, as soon as you get out the door you're putting the gloves on in order to uh, uh, handle any of the equipment outside the, outside the cab. I got in many years ago, I guess it's probably almost 20 years ago, I stopped spraying in an open tractor. Um, the, the smells that we were getting riding around in an open tractor were not healthy and that's one of the things I've been taught working in the plant is uh, as soon as you smell something wrong it's time to fix it. So we started running with cab tractors almost 20 years ago and that uh, is certainly made it much safer. Uh, when we are picking a pesticide we try to pick one that has low volume because the, it's only a waste, you know, if you have high volumes, you have more containers to handle, more product to handle. The less product that you can handle is the better, you're going to be better off. My attitude towards safety is, is probably driven by the fact I work for Shell. I've been there now for almost 33 years and working in the plant safety is huge and one of the troubles as farmers we we don't have somebody uh, looking over our shoulder so we have to take the safety on ourselves I have been huge with the safety I want to send everybody home at the end of the day the way they came in at the start of the day and I think he honestly believes that and I'd like to do the same here I don't want to see anybody uh, taken off to the hospital here and odds are it'll be either my son or myself, so that makes it real close to the heart. When it was first came out, I thought, okay, why do I need to be involved in this? And uh, as myself, with all my plant experience, I'm not the one that needs it. But there are certainly farmers out there that don't have any... Um, background or experience or somebody to even help them through it. And this past winter, my, both of my sons wrote the, the uh, they actually went through the course. I wrote the test because I've uh, done the course before 
And it was interesting that we had a little competition among the, uh, the three of us. And we had, I got a 98, my oldest son got a 96, and my younger son got a 98. So they listened, obviously. Calibration. I guess that, that's one of the things that when you talk about spraying, uh, we calibrate in every field by, I know how much my sprayer should do 40 acres. I know the acreage in each field. And if we get to the end of the field, and uh, actually many of my fields happen to be 40 acres exactly, and if we get to the end of the field and we have more or less, we'll adjust a little bit to change constantly. So we're, we're doing a, a bit of a cal uh, calibration all the time. I was just reading an article uh, from uh, it's through the no-till farmer and uh, this is Americans talking that uh, they are three years away from huge resistance uh, to glyphosate. I have always tried to keep 50% of my acres in a non-glyphosate chemical. Um, we grow probably about 50% soybeans and 50% of other crops and I do not use uh, glyphosate on corn or uh, on wheat, which we can't, but uh, I also grow a little bit of hay, which just for rotation, and I certainly believe that there are people overusing glyphosate, and I try not to use it more than two years in a row on any one farm. Actually, I am very concerned about glyphosate uh, resistance. Uh, it is a chemical that has been very useful, it's cheap, it is very effective, and I want to keep it effective. So uh, I try not to use glyphosate, uh, not to overuse it.